Many central banks have been delivering jumbo-sized rate hikes in an attempt to tamp down red-hot inflation. But as we get into the final months of 2022, are there any signs of progress in that fight? Joining us now, Hafiz Nordin. He's Portfolio Manager for Global Fixed Income and TD Asset Management. Great to have you back on the program. Great. It's a pleasure, pleasure to be here. So let's talk about that. There's been plenty of pain in equities and bonds this year for investors, but all in the name of trying to fight inflation. How are we actually doing on that front? Well, you know, when we look at current levels of inflation, um, you know, that's one of the main performance metrics uh, for central banks. Does feel like there's still a lot of work to do. We had U.S. CPI uh, last week, the print for September, show that um, headline may be starting to stabilize, but core inflation ticked up again to 6.6%. That's a new high for the cycle. And when we drill down into the numbers, um, it's the services part of the economy that's driving the bus now in terms of inflation momentum, uh, less so the goods story. So all of that stuff about supply chains, uh, being all the bottlenecks, you know, shipping costs, that story is starting to wane. And it's really more the services story. And within that, it's more about housing. Um, so rent and owner equivalents rent, both at a run rate of about 7 to 8% now uh, in the US. Uh, so really, on that basis, you know, seems like there's a lot of work to do. But I think it's important to take a step back and think about, do we assess central banks on current levels of inflation? Arguably, no. Uh, monetary policy does work with about a two to three uh, quarter lag. Uh, so when we look at forward looking indicators, which we really monitor, um, there's definitely evidence out there that the tightening that they've done so far is starting to have an effect in terms of cooling demand, bringing down inflation going into next year. Uh, but where it ends up is still, um, you know, still a, a fair amount of uncertainty. Yeah, our central bank started the week by releasing their business outlook survey and their consumer sentiment survey as well. And I guess if you pushed out far enough on both surveys, uh, there seems to be some faith that the central bank can get it under control, but right now it seems to be uh, a bit of concern out there Even among consumers and among businesses that we could be headed for some tough times and that uh, perhaps the inflation fight's going to take a little while longer. Right, yeah. So, so you're right to, to point out that long-term inflation expectations still look kind of anchored. So that's the good news that came out of that, that survey. But, um, you know, one to two-year inflation expectations still quite high. And I think the general takeaway from, from the Bank of Canada's report there was that um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty at a consumer level and a business level in terms of the inflation picture for the next year and even the growth picture. And so for consumers and for workers, that means that they're really um, looking towards wage growth to help them to buffer that shock. They're demanding higher wages. And that's the risk that we really have to look out for. It's that wage price spiral. Um, you know, if we see higher wages, um, uh, being uh, given out to workers, um, then businesses will likely pass that on to higher prices for services and goods. And then again, that, that's a second order effect of, in, of higher inflation. Um, and if that continues in the spiral, that's really where the Bank of Canada can lose control. So, you know, I think, you know, the, the key message for investors is that even if uh, growth starts to come down meaningfully, um, you know, we, sh we still should expect the Bank of Canada and, and most central banks to stay hawkish to prevent that scenario from ever happening because um, that's the one where we can really lose control of the economy. I think the last time we heard from our central banker, Tiff Macklin, was it Friday on the tail end of the IMF or maybe the beginning of the IMF meetings where he sort of took questions from the media? Oh, lots of tough talk. What else did we hear from those meetings? I mean, that was the gathering of these people who are charting this course. Right, exactly. So, um, you know, a lot of things for them to talk about, but I think front and center um, is the growth outlook. So every, you know, every, you know, twice a year at these meetings, the IMF releases a world economic outlook, um, pretty downbeat picture for next year in terms of declining growth expectations um, and, uh, you know, kind of around two and a half to three percent global growth. But inflation still staying sticky at around four to five percent next year. Um, I wouldn't say that really fundamentally changed a lot in terms of the market's expectations. I think the private sector growth estimates and inflation estimates were already kind of there. But I think what they brought out of those discussions, because of what has happened recently in the UK uh, and some other countries, is this fiscal conundrum. And I think that's going to be one of the new risks going forward that we really have to watch. Um, this idea that um, you know, a, a number of, uh, or a lot of households across the globe dealing with higher borrowing costs, dealing with higher consumption costs, and they're feeling the pain and the pressures on governments now to try to think of, you know, how do they buffer these shocks? Um, we saw the UK do it the wrong way, yeah. um, but it doesn't mean that that, that um, you know, that approach to, you know, having some sort of fiscal stimulus um, is gone. Uh, that pressure is going to be there. Um, and I think that's the risk to watch in terms of, you know, who's next to, to try that, try that, those types of measures.
When it comes to trying to tame inflation, you mentioned uh, shelter costs. And some people are saying, oh, no, wait a minute. I keep seeing headlines about home prices coming down pretty dramatically in the face of higher borrowing costs. But, of course, higher borrowing costs than if you're a homeowner, maybe you got a floating rate mortgage, or you're not getting a break there. And if you're a renter, it doesn't sound like you're getting a break either. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the U.S. is actually um, probably front and center here because we've seen mortgage rates um, go up very, very quickly there. Um, the 30-year mortgage rate in the U.S. is the one to watch um, for that market. Um, it's just over 7%, um, and that's at an over 20-year high. So um, we're definitely already seeing a lot of reduction in, in uh, home buyer sentiment. House prices have come down. Um, but the reality is that we haven't seen that show up in the CPI data. You know, the rents and, and, how, and owner equivalents rents are still going up. Um, but I think what we should really watch are kind of some of those forward, forward looking indicators. So, you know, Zillow is a good example of alternative data that does show that um, the rate of change of rents um, is starting to come down. So rents are still going up, but the, the pace of appreciation of rents is a bit lower now compared to it was in the first half of the year. So perhaps a bit of a glimmer of hope there. Um, that um, it's working its way um, into you know, the inflation data um, and that you know, the tightening measures that have been done so far will be sufficient. Uh, but you know, it's, it's still kind of fluid right now. Interesting too that you mentioned you know, the central bank should be forward looking because the moves they're making right now are trying to affect change down the road. I think Beata Carancy, uh, TD's uh, chief economist, uh, recently at events that I've been in, she was on the show and I was at an event with her, sort of saying, uh, curious maybe, is a way to put it, that the central bank seems to be focused on, you know, okay, this inflation print comes out, we're focused on it as investors, the central bank's focused on it, but all these things are backward looking. Yeah, that's right. And that's, you know, that, that is the big challenge for monetary policymakers. Um, you know, it's like driving a car and only looking in the rearview mirror. Um, and, and that's really the, you know, the, the, you know, the tough uh, part of this, that job. Um, you know, and, but I think at the end of the day, um, one of the things that really came out from the IMF meetings and from, you know, as they, uh, you know, got feedback from investors was that uncertainties are increasing and therefore there, there is reason to perhaps slow down um, in terms of uh, the pace of rate hikes. Um, but that Fed, you know, that pivot <laughs> that everybody's so waiting for. You said for, slow down or I right? assume the, pivot, the word pivot almost yeah, exactly, jumped off my mind. Exactly. You know, everybody's waiting for that. Uh, but everything I talked about just now in terms of what we saw from the bank, uh, the business outlook survey in, uh, in Canada, that risk of the wage price spiral that is still front and center for, for central banks. And we know that they've been saying that they'd rather trade off um, lower growth or even a recession than um, you know, let inflation really uh, run away. And I think that's what we have to expect going forward.